visions in my head. People tell me that I'm crazy. Hey Sam. Hi. I'm so excited to have you on. So excited to be here. We realize that we have like so many mutual friends. There's even more people than we even listed. The Hughes sisters, Keaton, Keaton just interned for her. So, so many. many people. I feel like everyone Keaton was telling me, she was like, You're gonna love her. Yeah, when she was she texted me and she's like, Oh my gosh, I'm so excited for this. I can't <laughs> wait. I wanna have Keaton and her mom on my podcast. Yes. Like, oh my, have you met her mom? Do you know I her mom? I have not, but I want to. <gasps> she's literally the best. Okay, so we're gonna start off the episode. Let's start off. Wait, so we're gonna do hot seat. I literally like just told her I was like, oh, we're gonna do hot seat, whatever. So it's just What's three happy? random questions that I ask you. Okay. It's a fancy way of just like putting me on the spot. Yeah, it's Let's like it. it's just I'm asking you questions. Okay, <laughs> number one, what is a like random travel essential? What's the first thing that comes to mind for you? Ooh, I love my summer Fridays jet lag mask. I that still have my... not tried that. What? I, it's Girl. crazy. So anywhere I go, I bring that mask, and my friend actually wore, like does social media for them, and she like got me onto it. But I feel like for as much traveling, like if you travel a lot, yeah, and especially like when you're traveling to different climates and your skin is just like it's the best thing ever. Like in your hotel room, put it on at night, and the next morning you wake up and you feel amazing. Your face feels amazing. Yeah, I need it. It's the best. You so many it. people have talked about that on this podcast too, and I know what it looks like. I also I'm on their PR list, so like I don't know why I haven't gotten it. But like, hey, summer Fridays. <laughs> yeah, like, wait, summer Fridays, hit me up. Uh, okay, number two, what is your most embarrassing moment? This is a good one to just get to know people, you know? Uh, I feel like there was probably a time, I, well, like, public, okay, so I was telling somebody this the other day, because I hate public speaking, which is, people always find that weird. They're like, you hate, I'm like, yeah, I know, I do a lot of speaking, but, like, I really don't love it. Yeah. But I had a public speaking class in college, and it was my first public speaking class, and we had to, in the first five minutes, pick out a topic out of a hat and speak about it. And I picked out bologna, literally. No. I've never tried bologna in my entire life. And I got up there and I just like didn't even say one word. And I was like stuttering. And I literally, all that came out of my mouth was it's like ham. And then <laughs> and we were supposed to talk for five minutes. And the teacher was like, motioning for me to keep talking and I just was like it's like ham yeah. like I couldn't say anything like, else. what else would you say I wouldn't even know what to say what the hell do you say yeah. like and everyone in the class was laughing and I just like sat down and like literally didn't want to show my face ever again but it traumatized me and like ever since then I've been like petrified of public speaking but like yeah baloney I literally had to talk about it for five minutes and couldn't say anything so that is like genuinely traumatic like I would be horrific. like no yeah. it's horrible and I it was, oh no 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 it was like my first it was my first class at college basically like it was the summer going into my freshman year it was all athletes and like like just cool people in the room like I went in it was like all the people I'd like met right before I started school and to stand up there and literally just like not even be able to get a word out like I was I'm like my face was bright red I like swear I broke out in hives or something I don't even know but it was horrible it was traumatic honestly I was like Screw this. I hate it. <laughs> that was so bad, but at least you have a go-to, like, embarrassing story to go... You know what I'm saying? It's, like, something to tell at a party, you know? Yeah, I've got a million, I feel like. I feel like I'm always doing shit. I feel like I'm always sucked. But... Yeah. Okay, last one. What is your favorite car song? Mm. So, I would say right now, probably either Higher Love by Kygo and Whitney Houston, the, like, new song that just I came out. I haven't listened to that yet. It's so good. I love Whitney Houston. But also, my brother writes music, and yeah. so I'm going to be, like, super annoying and say <laughs> one of his songs. Um, but he wrote the song for Arizona, Nostalgic, that just oh, came out. Oh, really? Like, single. Yeah. yeah. So, yeah, you should listen to it. It's so good. That's, like, anything by Arizona, or I like Kygo, all of my brother's songs, honestly. So, yeah, that would be my go-to, probably. I love that. I have a shared go-to car song with Lindsay Hughes. What um, is it? When she lived here, we would slash like last month when I saw her, All Me by Drake. For oh, some yes. reason, that is just the best song to play in the car with your yes. friends. Like it was it was it's our song, you know? It's such a good one. Honestly, all it's, the old all the old school Drake albums. Yes. The other day when we were in Italy with my family last week, we put on like all the old school like Cameron, Hey Ma, like mm-hmm. Craig David, like Little Rob Summer Nights, like all the old school summer jams that you used to like, and all the old Drake albums, like all that old school hip hop was just so good. Like, like a few weeks ago, I was driving to San Diego with some friends, and one of our friends was like, "Okay, think of what's a song that reminds you of 2013," <laughs> and we were like, "What?" And then we just made a playlist from it, and yes. it was like so fun because yes. it's such a random like time, but that's such a fun thing to do if you like pick a specific like. So fun. Time period. I was like, oh my gosh, it was like uh, a bunch of like Childish Gambino, yeah, like sweatpants. 
Yes. Oh my god, throw back to that. All yeah. the old, I swear, like, 2000s music is just my shit. Like, that's, like, the stuff I love. Like, no. all that old school, like, juvenile, Nelly, Outkast. Yes. Like, all the old rappers, even, like, the ETL rappers, like, uh-huh. Lil Jon, all, like, all of them. Like, they're just, their music's just so, it's that's... so nostalgic. Like, it, you're like, oh my god, I was doing something so cringy in middle school or high school, and I would listen to this song, you know, like. So, that's my stuff. I love throwback music, like, Same. as a whole. Again, to bring up Lindsay Hughes for the 15th time, this is genuinely, like, completely unrelated. She has the best throwback playlist on Spotify. Does she? I, she, pers- she has perfected it. It is the best. I play it often still. Like, okay, it is, it's I need the to best. get this. It's right throw now. with the, like, emoji back or something to okay. the left or something like that. I don't know. It's, like, literally the best song. It's the best playlist ever shout like, out it's Lindsay so good we shout out you. Lindsay Hughes keep making playlists girl I'm here for it <laughs> she's gonna like make her life because it's a playlist she's gonna oh my gosh okay um do you want to give us a little one minute bio just like tell us about yourself yeah so I was born in London and moved to Atlanta with my whole family when I was like 12 um grew up in Atlanta loved it got a college degree in business and then moved out to LA to work in the fashion industry I worked in the fashion industry for six years And then, like, for brands like Wild Fox and people like that. I love Wild Fox. It was, like, back in the day, Wild Fox. Oh, my gosh. It was, like, it was the number, like, it was the best. Oh, yeah. So it was cool, like, working for a company like that. And then worked in-house for brands for six years. And then two years ago started the Mayfair Group. And that's basically where I'm at now. That's really cool. Where did you go to college? I went, so I went to South Carolina, but then I ended up transferring in-state to a school in Georgia, like a small school. Okay, I, like, cool. missed home. I was such a homebody. I, like, was, like, two, three hours away from my parents and my siblings, and I was like, I want to be closer. That's too much. much. Yeah, my mom was like, can you leave us alone? But <laughs> I literally moved back home to Georgia, loved it, went to a small school, graduated, and then just moved out here and, like, started working in fashion and stuff. I went to Georgia last fall, and I loved it, because I went to visit Danielle and Brooke at UGA, yes. and we were, I mean, obviously, we were in Athens, and then we went to Atlanta. What it's did you think about so Athens? so cute. I liked it. I think okay. it's a great college town. It's like, amazing. It's a really, really good college town. Like, there's actually things to do, and, like, lots of cute shops and stuff. Yeah. Like, it was, I was, like, oh, my God, this is perfect. Also, I love seasons, so I was, like, mm. so, it was the fall, and it was so pretty. You get, like, all seasons in Georgia. That's yeah. the thing. You really do. You get, like, true seasons, which is the best part, and... I feel like college towns there are just, like, everyone lives for football. Like, people yes. are so passionate about the schools in the South that it's just, like... Yes. And I'm from Texas, a, and that's so Oh, sad. yeah, exactly. It's such a fun... I feel like it's such a fun place to go to college because, yeah. like, you have a full experience down there. People are so excited to just be there. It's, like, yeah. it's way big of a thing. Like, especially sports teams. Like, we joke here. Like, we literally... The Rams were in the Super Bowl. One was, like, no one cared. No one like, cared. not one person. It was not a thing. It was so... It was bizarre. Like, my family... <laughs> My family's like huge sports fans, and they were like, "So, like, what's going on?" I'm like, literally, I haven't heard one person say Talk anything. About it. Yeah. It's so weird. Meanwhile, it's if UGA makes it to like an SEC championship. People are losing their shit. Oh, over it. absolutely! <laughs> like, it's like people cried when they like people literally cried when they lost. Like, lost. Yeah. like it's just this whole thing. But yeah, I was incredible. Big fan of Georgia. Love um, it. So, do you want to go into like more about the Mayfair Group and like what yeah, it is? Totally. So we're basically like a brand representation company. That's kind of what we started as. So we basically offer services of PR, social media, sales, and creative content. But from the get-go, we kind of wanted to revolutionize the way that service-based companies are, like, perceived. So, like, we wanted to be the first service-based company to, like, have a platform and build a lifestyle and have, like, a brand, quote-unquote, essentially. Um, And so we kind of set out with this whole lifestyle in mind. We were like, we're going to be, like the hype girls for females and just constantly post about female empowerment and you know make our feed and all of our content about nostalgic moments and decades and things that make people feel a certain way and just like honestly make you happy when you're like on your Instagram like you see our content I feel like it's a motivational quote it's like a nostalgic content great feed big fan thank you (laughs) shout out to the social team it's not me Um, but Literally, so we kind of like set out with that, and then we also obviously do a ton of branded stuff. So we work with brands like Wildflower Cases, um, we work with brands like Amanda Steele's brand Steel, and we do like different services for them. So whether that's social, like running their social, or doing like PR or sales, like we do all of those services in house. So yeah, started it two years ago, like now it's grown into something insanely like crazy, like yeah. in just two years. We started the year with 8,000 followers, and now we have 180K in, like, yeah. six months, which is just, it's, like, nuts, honestly. Like, I feel like it's growing so fast, but it's just so exciting. It's honestly such a cool, 
exciting time to be involved in a business. No, oh, it's so cool. How yeah. did you like decide that that's what you wanted to do? Like, how did you get into that? Yeah, so I like worked in house for brands, and I think like working in house for brands, I learned so much. Like, I worked for Wild Fox, and I worked for Fraser Sterling Jewelry. Like, I with- also love Fraser Sterling. Yes. yes. Shout out Fraser. So I was Fraser's first hire, and like I helped her, like me and her, like kind of grew that business together, and just worked for her for a long time. Learned a lot from her. And just worked in-house for brands and kind of noticed that, like, what happens in the fashion industry is, like, people outsource things. So, like, they outsource their social media, they outsource their PR or their content or their sales. And those companies don't work together because they're different companies. Mm -hmm. So, we're kind of the first company to offer everything in-house and basically, like, offer all those services under one roof. So, like, we collaborate with everything that we do. Like, our social team works hand-in-hand with the PR team who works hand-in-hand with the sales team and the design. So, like, that's cool. we basically just help build small brands, kind of. That's, like, really what we do. And then also just we have our own, like, Mayfair lifestyle and everything that we're doing on the side. So, we, like, drop merch and we do, like, all sorts of, like, creative content and stuff. So, that's really yeah, cool. it's, when, it's grown so fast. It's just weird. <laughs> when did you move to Arizona? Um, so I moved three years ago. Yeah. So I lived in LA for six years. We were just talking about this because of LA parking. <laughs> but we hate it. But um, I lived here for six years and worked for all those brands and stuff. And then my husband, I'm married, and my husband plays pro soccer. And so he had played for a bunch of different teams. And when I was living in LA working, he was like playing for all these different teams and stuff. And he was on like one year contracts. And then we got married. And we were like, we should probably live in the same state. Like, we're married now. <laughs> yeah. So he got signed to Arizona to, like, a three-year deal. And I was like, okay, I'm going to, like, leave LA and move to Arizona. That's and cool. then, like, shortly after that is when I started Mayfair, basically, in Arizona. And that's kind of honestly why it started there. And now it's, like, we're set in stone there, you know. It's, yeah. like, home for us, so. That's really cool. Yeah. So who did you, like, did you start this solely on your own? Or, like, how did you, who, like, what was your first hire? Like, what did you do? Like, what did that process look like? Yeah, so basically I, like, came up with the concept. I was actually in London. And Mayfair, the whole way it came about was, besides the concept, was my parents actually met at a nightclub in Mayfair. Like, because I, oh bor- I was born in London, so I grew up okay. in London. And my parents met in a nightclub in Mayfair. They've been married for 35 years. So we always joke about just, like, this nightclub in Mayfair and just, like, how they met and all this stuff. And it's also just such a cool district in London. And so I was in London at the time, and I was coming up with the concept. It was over Christmas break, and I was like, I really want to start my co- this company. And my mom and dad were like, just do it. Like, what do you – like, what, just go for it. Like, And so Wildflower was my first brand that I signed, and they were the first, like, client Sydney that I had. Shout out Sid and Deb. I love you. <laughs> and Dave and Michelle. Um, but they were like the first brand and they were like, the minute that you go solo, we're going to work with you. So like, just let us know when you're going to do it. And so, yeah, it started in my guest bedroom with just me. And I had one girl that kind of like assisted me, um, part time, but we were just like working from my floor in my guest bedroom. And then within six months we were like, holy shit, we need an office and we got to like move out. And then it just all started growing and growing. So Dang. how big is the team now? Um, so we have like 10 full-time employees, but we have like 25 girls basically between oh. interns and employees and stuff. So it's like a team of 25 now. Dang, that is so cool. Okay, let's talk about like um, more negative things. Yes. <laughs> Not even negative, but like what is the time of the business? Because obviously in the past two years, like this has really blown up and like everyone knows who the Mayfair group is, especially mm-hmm. on Instagram. But like what is like a low moment that you've had since starting it? I know. Tell me. I know. Yeah. No, I know that there's just, especially on social media, I feel like, and I don't even do the best time. I feel like if you look at my Instagram and you're like, oh my gosh, this girl like lives a really great life. And like, <laughs> I don't have a great life, but there's definitely a lot of times that are like, oh no, I literally, yes. this is awful. So like, tell us a, a moment like that, you know? Yes. I mean, honestly, I feel like, first of all, Instagram is like everybody's best portrayal. Hi, like, real. It is. It totally is. Yeah. Like, you're not going to be like, I'm sitting on my floor crying. And yeah, I'm not going to post life. a selfie like that. <laughs> yeah. 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 My dad's always like, you always post when you're traveling. And I'm like, well, I'm not going to post me sitting at a desk. Yes. So like, that's what I do when I'm home. I'm working. That's so. my other thing. It's like, I'm only going to post that. Like people will be like, all you do is work out. I'm like, it's because that's the only hour that I leave my house because my office is in my house a day. <laughs> so obviously I'm going to post that. I'm not going to post from my office. I'm, oh my gosh. Anyways, you're me sorry. <laughs> also Loki, I barely work out. So when I do, I'm like, I need to like, make sure people know. I, work <laughs> I need out. everyone to know that I went to Hot Pilates. Thank Once you. a week. Yeah, I'm here. Thank you. Never again. Okay, thank you. Um, but yeah, so I feel like a hard time. Um, I mean, honestly, running a business is just so hard. I feel like it's one of those things like 
there's nothing that you can do to prepare for it. Like people could tell you like you need enough experience and all of that is true. But I feel like it's one of those things like you're just going to venture into it and figure it the hell out. Um, so I feel like just going into business and learning how to like manage people, like firing people, like, yeah, that's shit, so that's hard. hard, especially people that have like been with your business for a long time. And like, you're start now you're affecting people's lives. Like, yeah. you know, when you let someone go, like, that's not just like a light decision. That's something like that's going to change your life a little bit. So yeah. it's just stuff like that. That's hard. Um, and then just like negative shit on Instagram. I feel yeah. like, I mean, people are always going to hate on every like I feel like there's always going to be haters and like mm-hmm. trolls on the internet but like just learning to like deal with all of that just because I've never really like pers- like my personal Instagram isn't really like it's never really been a thing like I haven't really ever been focused on that and so now with Mayfair like we just get comments and stuff and it's like you don't know us like so I feel like just that but mostly I feel like it's more business things like letting people go and stuff that's just like hard to deal with and navigate because like no one tells you like how to fire someone how do you like actually what do you do like what how what's like a practical step to fire someone i literally will be so terrified it's just so awful like i feel like there's no like honestly like you just have to obviously go in and um first of all like set the meeting and then go in and just be like whatever the reasoning is and just like sit him down and talk to him and i just feel like it's such a scary thing because it's never going to be a good conversation. Yeah, like, no. there's no one that's going to, like, leave getting let go and be like, all right, love you, girl. You know, yeah. like, it's always just going to be a shitty thing. But, like, I don't know. I just feel like the more that you can make it, obviously, like, big picture and not about, like, a personal, you yeah. know, like, it's always just, like, here's where we're going. And, um, like, we love you to death and so grateful for everything you've done. But, like, here's where we're going kind of thing. It's but not the right but also losing employees. Like, when people quit. Like, I remember the first person that quit Mayfair. Like, I cried. I thought, like, I went through, like, a breakup. Like... She was, like, my first employee, and she, like, left, and I literally cried for days, and my, my husband was, like, get your shit together, and, like, yeah. you, you're gonna, like, lose people, and you're gonna have to fire people, and just, like, you need to get used to that, but I literally felt like I went through a breakup, like, I was, like, yeah. this is hard, because I was, like, what did I do wrong, like, you know, but yeah. people just have, like, things, like, they obviously stick with certain jobs, and then they want something else, and that's okay, you know, so it was just, like, stuff like that, I feel like it's always hard in business. Yeah. I yeah I don't think I'd ever I mean I'm sure at some point in my life you can have to fire someone but like I never want to do that and I don't want to think about it ever it's horrible no it's horrible so just what, call me in and I'll just be there <laughs> and we I like I have one of those like mics in my ear that like no one else knows and I like turn to the side of my who I say next <laughs> I'm like sitting there I would 100% cry like I don't know what to do or I would just be really awkward actually I don't feel like I'm really I don't know what I would do I literally can't even imagine it okay so what do you look for when you're looking for like in to hire someone like an employee or an intern like what is something that you look for in someone I feel like innovation like innovation at Mayfair is like our biggest thing that we like pride ourselves on just like making content that's completely different to anyone else and like just making sure that everything we do in every sector is different so I feel like just innovation in the sense of like you're gonna bring something really cool and creative to the team obviously like a hustler mentality like I feel like you have to be such a hard worker especially like in a small business because you're so immersed in it and we work we all like work like super super hard but like I don't know, like, I get cover letters sometimes that are, like, so creative that have, like, like, people will send them with, like, memes in them and just, like, I don't know, like, really fun stuff and stuff that, like, totally applies to Mayfair. And I'm, like, how creative. It's like, so personal. Yeah, and yeah. obviously, like, that's not for every business. But for Mayfair specifically, we're a content business and we do other stuff. But, like, content is a huge part of who we are. So if you're going to get creative in your cover letter with some content, like, we yeah. get down with that, you know? So I just feel like knowing, like, who you're applying for and, and obviously making sure that you're, like, going out of your way to, like, make your cover letter and your resume, like, appeal to whoever it is that you're applying for. What is your, like, interview process like? Oh, God. It's like you're literally interviewing for, like, to be, like, the president's, like, advisor or something. Like, we've made it, like, so strict now and we feel slightly ridiculous for doing that. But honestly, like, finding good people is so hard. Yes. And our interns, like, we, we like, key in and people like that that have interned for us, like, they're such a huge part of, like, the business. It's not just, like, they come in and they're, like, getting coffee and shit, you know? Like, they're literally pitching concepts and, like, spearheading campaigns. So it's one of those things that, like, we interview, like, crazy hard. Like, I feel like there's so many steps to the interviews now. So we have, like... Basically, we, we announce that we're, you know, looking on our Instagram, whether that's full-time, part-time, or, or interns, and then people apply, and then we have multiple rounds of interviews, and then we also give them projects to do. So, we'll, like, if it's a social media intern like, applying for, like, a social media internship, we'll send them a social media project to, like, mock up a grid for one of our brands and pitch us, like, story concepts and stuff. So, 
I mean, the best way for us to figure out if you're going to be good is to actually for us to give you a project to see if you're going to be able to work within that sector, you know? Yeah. So, and kind of, while it is more time consuming, it saves time, ultimately. Yeah, totally, because we don't want to train people and then be like, oh, you're not a right fit. Yeah, you know? and it's a waste of time, and then you have to, like, go back to the drawing board. Yeah. And, and then, then there's, like, a blood. Hire someone. And yeah. there's, like, a urine sample, a blood sample. No, yeah, no, exactly. <laughs> yeah, 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 that makes sense. And you're like... Um, okay, so do you like books? Like, do you like reading or podcasts or anything like that? Girl, I'm like a super nerd, like okay. self help. Like, Thank God. Nerd. Okay, what are your favorites? I need to hear um, all. Okay, so I love. First of all, my favorite is like how to win friends and influence of people. Perfect. You are exactly my type of person. Yes. Keep going. This is That's great. Like my favorite. <laughs> I love you are a badass. Yeah, I read this book. book called like Leading Women. I read that like last year, and that was like amazing. Any like self help business books yeah. is like my shit. You know, oh like my God, that's thank my. Thank God. I was really hoping because I wanted to talk about that. Yes. I was just hoping for the best. Wait. Okay. Tell me everything about the Leading Women book. So it's just it so cool. It basically t- goes through all of like all the women that have, like, been influential women, Mm -hmm. like, you know, that have, like, started companies or, like, just even done things and talked about, like, all of their traits and their advice that they would give, like, and it talks about how, like, as women, like, we're soft people sometimes, but that's okay. You can use that to be also, like, a better leader and just how, like, you know, you're going to walk into meetings with, like, an all-female, like, uh, an all-male, like, boardroom and, like, you need to be able to, like, take a seat at the table and know what you're talking about. And so it just navigates you through this whole world of like being a woman being a woman and like how to navigate these certain situations and how you can like be a better leader and a better manager and like more confident and it's just really good i'm like, gonna prime this book like immediately after <laughs> i love to. that stuff it is so good you would love it what are your top like if you were to describe a good leader like what do you think the top qualities are i feel like for me it's well definitely confidence and knowing like what you're good at, but also knowing what you're not good at. And I feel like that's the thing is I feel like a lot of people just like know their strengths, but I feel like the best people know their weaknesses Mm -hmm. because for me with Mayfair, I got people around me that are good at the things I'm not good at. And even sometimes better at a lot of things that I'm, you know, just okay at. And that's okay. Cause that's why like we have an all-star team. I truly believe because I have so many talented girls and we're all female. I don't know if you knew that, but like we're an all female company. So it's one of those things, like, I've found people that are just so good at, like, all the things I'm not good at, and I know what I'm not good at, so it's, like, I wanted to make sure and make sure that we had that on our team, you know? Yeah. So, and just getting better at shit that you're not good at. I feel like that, honestly, is what I, I like, definitely hadn't managed people. Like, I'm a very, like, self-motivated person, so, like, I worked in sales and was, like, you know, like, I've always been independent. I, yeah. I feel like you're probably like that, yes. too, right? Yeah. But then when you go into management, like, you're motivating other people. And, like, people have way different ways of being motivated than, like, you may. You know, so, like, you may have somebody that, like, reacts better to, like, positive reinforcement or can't take constructive criticism. Like, there's all these personalities in in your team that you're, like, navigating how to manage. And it's sometimes frustrating because you're, like, oh, I just, like, do my own shit and do my own goals and, like, achieve the things that I want to. But, like, a lot of people aren't like that, you know? So I think just, like learning how to manage people was like something that I was like, I need to be better at. And I've read a lot of like books on and stuff and honestly found people that are great at management. Like my, my counterpart, who's like our COO now, she's great at it. And so we, we kind of like compliment each other in that sense. Cause I feel like she can just like sit down with the girls and like, you know, so I just think finding people that are good at the things that you're not good at, honestly. Yeah. I love that. I also think exactly what you said about like just finding people who are good at what you are not good at mm-hmm. it's one it's like knowing yourself yes. and also I think to like knowing yourself that means that you've taken the time to yeah. figure that out and typically you've like a lot of the time I feel like for me personally it's like through like literally just sitting down and thinking sometimes but like yes. reading and podcasts or like experience like I know the things I'm not good at and I'm like okay totally. this is not like in this setting that I'm in with the internship that I'm in it's like I know, especially the people that I'm around, because they're some of my closest friends, like, I know who's good at what, and then I'm like, all right, let's just do that. Yes. I'm, I know that I'm very good, like, I'm, like, a visionary. Mm-hmm. Not in the sense of, like, I'm, like, I just tell people what to do. It's not that, but, like, <laughs> I, like, am good at, like, oh, the overall idea and then, like, connecting people yes. in that sense. Like, I know that I'm good at that, but I'm not good at, like, maybe, like, part of, like, admin stuff. I don't like yes. that stuff. Like, I'm not, that's not, like, my, like, grace zone. Like, it's totally. not like, my thing. No, that's, like, but I, like, I'm, like, no, 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 it's not happening. But I think also it's being able to delegate. Yes. Because when you hold on to something, you're making it smaller. So totally. it's, like, small thinking versus big thinking. Totally. So if you hold on to it, 
it's like you're basically suffocating the idea yes. because you think that you can do it and that you want to do it and you think you can do it better. And even sometimes if you can do it better, that doesn't mean that you should be the one doing it. Totally. Because you want to like raise other people up to be able to do that as well. Like totally. it's long term. You, you can't do it all. You like physically cannot do it all. And I think just being a big picture person too, like you cannot be short sighted in business. Like it's one of those things like you have to always see big picture because you're going to have to take steps like sideways and backwards yeah. in order to like get where you want to go. But if you like keep your eye on the big picture, I feel like that's so important. And delegation honestly is so important. Like you physically can't do it all. I'm sure mm -hmm. you feel that way too. Like you yeah. literally cannot do it all, but delegating stuff and finding people you trust that are even better at the things that like you, you know, social media management or even team management, whatever it is, financial, like finances, stuff like that, like delegating that stuff so that you can focus on the things that you are good at. And, you know, kind of, like, work on the bigger picture and stuff. So it's definitely a hard thing, you know, like, yeah. sometimes delegating. But you have to do it. And, yeah. like, you have to be good at just letting people take it and trusting them with it. And you can't, like, micromanage them because yeah. it's exactly right. You're stunning their growth if you're... You're suffocating them. <laughs> totally. Yeah. So, yeah, that's a huge thing, I feel like, for sure. Have you read Leaders Eat Last? No. Okay, I haven't either. But I just know it's, like, everyone... This is just the book that's, like, coming to mind. So many people have been like, you have to read this book. It's so good. Ooh, I but just, just the title alone, like, thinking about yes. that as Leaders Eat Last, I feel like so often... I don't... I'm trying to think of the phrase. My friend Taylor and I say this all the time. Basically, it's, like assistant syndrome in LA it's mm -hmm. never the people at the top who are the mean ones it's the people who are like I mean not never but most of the time it's not people at the top mm -hmm. who are the mean ones it's the people who are like at the bottom and trying to prove themselves right so they're like overcompensating because yeah. they're like insecure or whatever and they're the ones who are like so stressful and mean and hurtful and like leading from a place of insecurity right versus the people who are like actually at that place and they're like more chill and whatever and like granted yeah I guess they're more secure in whatever yeah. but it's also like I think I don't think your security necessarily always like rises like leans on that totally but it's like you look around and you see the people who are leaning out of insecurity and when I think about people that I like it's really easy to follow a good leader totally. so it's like I think about people who are leaders in my life and it's like they're a really great leader mm -hmm. and the common thing like that I'm really thinking about is that they're all just very secure yeah because it's like when you're leading out of insecurity you're projecting and snapping on everyone and no one wants to follow that leader no one trusts that leader it's totally. also the difference from like a leader and a manager so mm -hmm. leaders like lead with compassion and managers just manage yeah so it's like you want to create someone who's like a fan of you and right. loves you because those are the, like i can think of the people that like my pastors i'm with them for life like i'm, right. I'm committed to you but there's all the leaders in my life that would be like managers and I'm like, okay, you're just like there to be there. Totally. And like, that's also a long-term thing. Totally. You know? No, for sure. That, that's like, I need to order this book. This sounds amazing. Yeah. It's like, yeah, I haven't even read it. I just, I feel like I've read it because it's one of those books that has been quoted to me so, so many, many times. times. Yeah. So I'm like, I feel like I've read it, but I haven't. But I love that you're a badass book. How to Win Friends and Influence People. I have so many that I, like, need to read. I really want to read that girl one. Yeah, I'll send you, I'll send you. No, that. I'm, That's like, so I'm so, yeah, no, I'm so dumb. Okay, so, talking about, like, networking and building relationships, like, how did you build all the relationships with the brands that you're working with? I feel like it just, honestly, it happens over time. Like, one of, I think the biggest thing, like, from the get-go, Mayfair has always been about organic relationships and, and building brands and even relationships, basically, but... Um, yeah, we just, I've like worked in the industry for so long and I think that's like such a huge thing about like I was, I came from a sales background. So like building relationships was such an important thing to me. And I've always been an extrovert, like to the yeah. utmost degree. I feel like you're a very yeah, like, people sure. person. Yeah. Too. So it's never been hard for me to like meet people and network with people. Um, but I think like just preserving those relationships and making sure that you build those like long term are so important. But yeah, I mean, Mayfair like was built on, you know, those kinds of like things and just making sure that we work with brands that we really believe in mm -hmm. and we turn so much business down. It's because like, we only want to work with good people and we only want to work with brands we believe in. So I was like, I'm not making any more assholes money. Like that's my new, yeah. that's like my, our MO with Mayfair. We only want to work with good people and good brands. So yeah. that's kind of like, we were able to now be selective, which from the start, like we obviously like people would be like, why are you turning down business? You're a new company. And I was like, because I have a big picture in mind. Like I have a brand identity and a voice and we want everything to fit within that world. And at the end of the day, like, I feel like if you do align yourself with good people and good brands and you do the best you can and help people like you're going to be successful, you know? So, yeah. And it's never been about money for us. It's always just been about helping people, inspiring people and helping brands mostly. But then I feel like all of that stuff ends up coming through just because 
if you work hard at what you do and you really love it and you're good at it, then it'll all end up working itself out. But for us, it was just about helping brands build that deserve it. Like people like Wildflower who are some of the nicest yeah, people. They're literally, that. they're the best. Like yeah. they're so good. Yeah. I and they already them. had like such a dope ass brand, but like even for us to be able to work with them was just such an honor. And you know, we've like done a lot of business with them now and I got them into Urban Outfitters and now like we're almost yeah. in all doors and stuff, which is crazy. So but it's like, again, it just goes back to like us wanting to work with good people. That's yeah. kind of like who we are, you know? It's crazy too, because it's, you really have to be so careful with who is like representing you mm -hmm. because like you have, whoever you're around to just like relationally aligning yourself with, aligning yourself mm -hmm. with for so many reasons. Like obviously the first is like who you're becoming, whatever, yeah. but also in like a business sense, yes. like there are so many people or there's like brands that I'm like, I don't want to work. Like I've met them. They were so rude. I don't like it. Like stand off. Like there's so many things where I'm like, no, yeah. I don't want to do it. And also like it's people talk. So like if you're a brand, like specifically working with like influencers or whatever, if you're mm -hmm. a brand, that was very difficult to work with or very rude or standoffish or whatever. It's like, they talk, like, we're all friends. It's such a small world. You know, it's it such a small such world. A small I've world. turned down multiple deals because yeah. friends have had horror stories. Yeah. And it's like for brands that I would like really genuinely want to work with, but really? I just know how bad it was. And I'm like, I don't really necessarily like even want to like represent Align that. yourself with that. Yeah. No, it's so important. And I feel like that's transparent to people that like follow you or watch you and like, I feel like it's just so transparent to people. Like if you align yourself with like people that actually truly fit who you are and who you believe in and stuff, like that's transparent and authentic rather than just like promoting every single brand that comes yeah. your way, you know? Yeah. So I feel like honestly, those are the people that do so well because they just stay true to like who they are. Especially like, not with like sellout brands. Yes, exactly. <laughs> yeah. Exactly. No. And that happens so much. I feel like in this industry too, it's yeah. like, you know, but it's smarter to like see big picture and just only align yourself with people that like truly fit who you are and speak to like your just like what you believe in and stuff too. You know, yeah, for sure. So okay, take us through like a work day in your life, like oh, sure. just the actually let's let's run that back. Let's do morning routine into like work day. Okay. I love hearing people's routines. I'm like so into them. Okay, well I'm not like a huge. I feel like I'm I'm like my morning routine is pretty quick because I'm like a sleep in kind of person. Okay. Cool. Definitely not a morning person. I wish I was, but it's totally not me. But I'm a night person. Okay. Like, I'll explain. Um, but so I feel like I get up when any day I'm in the office, I get up. We have to be in the office by nine. So I will get up probably around like 7 45, 8. Like I'm, we were like, are super chill at Mayfair. We don't have like a dress code or anything. Yeah. Like anyone can wear whatever the hell they want. So like we, I get up and just like obviously get ready. My husband usually leaves around like, 8 15 or 30 so I'll like see him in the morning for a little bit we'll have our little time and then just like hang out with my pup and get ready for work and Wait, what kind of dog? she's a rescue Aww. she's so cute what? her name's Memphis and oh that's a great name I she's love that so cute but hang out with her get ready for work like get all my stuff together and then every single morning without fail I stop at Starbucks like, yeah they pretty much own my life like, <laughs> I feel like I've literally just spent so much what's money. your order I just get an iced coffee with half and half, basically. Okay. So just pretty basic, but I also just like, it like starts my morning, yeah. you know? And I've tried like making coffee at home and like we have coffee at the office, but like, I don't know, I just like love getting my like, there's something about the experience of it. Like, yeah. I don't know what it is, but there's something about it. And especially yeah. like going out and doing something else before you have to like, you're going to the mm -hmm. office or whatever. I don't know. I, yeah, I know. So, and I feel like everyone has their like coffee shops that they love, yes. like it's like close to where they work. Joshua, yeah. Joshua, for instance, yeah. for you. Yeah. Like, I feel like just that part of your routine is just like so such a part, huge part of your day. Like if I don't do that, yeah. I like, it throws my whole day off. But then I get to the office and honestly, like every day is so different. Like, I feel like it's one of those things. It's hard to even pinpoint what a day is looks like, but I feel like the first couple hours are consumed with me just like doing all my emails and catching up on everything from like the day prior or like responding to brands and like I manage all the big accounts for Mayfair so like we work with like people like Nordstrom and Urban Outfitters and because of all of our big brands and so that's a lot of my correspondence is like handling those big accounts and then I feel like after that I'll kind of check in with every sector and see like what's going on for the week um, so I'll like meet with the social team, meet with the PR team, content team, sales team, whatever. 
And then at once a week, which is cool, we have like pitch meetings, which is really fun. So all of our interns, all of our employees, we all sit around this big table and we have like three brands that we like choose that week. And then everyone pitches concepts for that. That's cool. So Mayfair is like a super collaborative kind of like office environment. So like, that's what I'm saying. Like even our interns, like everyone has input and mm-hmm. we like love that because I just feel like we love like creative input from all angles. So we just sit and we all just like pitch ideas and it's so fun. We'll go off on like crazy tangents and we'll be like, how the hell did we get here? Like, but it's awesome. So that, and then honestly I work out, like I try to work out every day after work. I have a trainer. He, go to the same trainer as Keaton. Oh my gosh. Okay, yes. Yeah. He's amazing. His name's Dan and he trains a lot of the girls in Arizona. So we go to him. Me and Keaton are always there together. We do, we do that. And then, honestly, just, like, go home and, like, have time with, like, my hubby and my puppy, like, make dinner or whatever we're doing that night for, and honestly, I wish I could say that, like, I stopped working, but I totally don't. Like, I work probably another, like, three to four hours at home at night. I stay up pretty late, and that's, like, I'm, like, I feel like that's why I'm not a a morning person either, because I, like... I'm a night owl. I'll watch Love Island too. I'm gonna admit. I it. still haven't watched it. I need Dude, to watch it. I, I heard so much. It's another thing that I feel like I've seen. I still want to watch Stranger Things. Like it's really Oh my gosh. Yeah. Okay, we need to have a binge. Like, no, I literally session. have to. So have you seen This Is Us? No. That's okay, that's my favorite show. That's my latest binge. But, but anyway. I also don't like like I don't like like real life sad yeah. shit. Yeah. Okay, yeah, then don't watch it. Yeah, this is us might be like that and like 13 reasons, but like that stuff yeah. is too real to me. This is us is kind of like oh, real life. I, I don't like the word triggering, but like oh yes. like you're like, oh shoot. Like, like that can happen in You're me. in your feelings. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. Like I know my, my husband literally watches it. Like my little yeah. sister and my husband watches it and they love it. Yeah. And like they have to like plan to watch it when I'm like not in <laughs> town. Like they'll be they'll be like, yo, abs, are we watching like and she's like, yeah, like and they like literally plan it for when I'm not there but um but yeah so I love Love Island so every night I'll watch like the British version and the American version and that's my like guilty pleasure at night and then like honestly I go to bed around like 11 and then just like start it all over but I usually work at night too so get that stuff done I like getting like everything all my emails answered for the most part and just like a clear head so that the next day I have like objectives like going into the next day of like okay here's what we're gonna do so if I need to like email any of the teams and be like tomorrow here's what we're doing blah 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 like I get that out of the way at night you know so do you have any like tools that you use like a planner or like a list app or anything like that that you use I'm like old school I like make notes in my iPhone and shit. Okay, I mean like, I do that too <laughs> yeah. like, I feel like I'm like I try to plan but like it just doesn't, doesn't work. work yeah yeah I like make notes in my iPhone or I'll do calendar like I do calendar stuff like yeah. I literally will be like email someone tomorrow at 8 a.m. and I like put it in my calendar yeah. like just so I don't forget because I feel like sometimes when you get into the office it's so easy to like forget oh. shit you know my google calendar is easily the most used app on my iphone same like for sure without a doubt and then it's notes and I just transitioned to using the circles on notes that you can check off wait what yeah okay well it's apparently been a thing for a while but I'm like really late to the bandwagon but even like I make like my grocery list and I'll make everything and it's just like it's so satisfying to you know oh, check it off. Yes. Do I that. I need to do this. Yeah, because then I used to like delete on my iPhone once I did it and I'm like, wait, I forgot what I did today. Yeah. You know? <laughs> so like the the checks, like those are really nice. I like that. Do you delete your notes? Because I just have notes no. and notes and notes and notes yeah. and notes of all my like lists, but I never delete oh, them. Ever. No, my so for this podcast, like we record our intros and I'll like think of things throughout the week that I want to like mention in the intro or whatever. Mm-hmm. And so I have like I think I have like like at least 40 maybe not 40 I don't know if I've done 40 intros but like so many that are like podcast intro podcast intro and last night I was trying to look for like old names in the podcast that we almost named it which I did find and they were so all all of them are so awful um but I like couldn't find anything and they're all the same I'm like nothing's organized here I just like put things down and that's it it's chaos but it works it It does work I'm like oh it's like the top whatever it's like fine okay so where can they find you on instagram yeah oh yeah, that's what you mean like where can we find mayfair and yeah Mayfair? cool um well basically mayfair's instagram is at the mayfair group and it's a great follow honestly like i care about mayfair's instagram way more than my <laughs> yeah. personal i'm like you can follow me if you want but honestly mayfair is way better but um my personal instagram is at sam Aberhart. So you can follow there, but definitely follow Mayfair because it gives you, like, it's got all yeah. the content. I have so many, like, posts saved. Yeah, Like the bookmark thing. I also a great feature on Instagram. I have so many boards. Oh, it's the best. Oh, I use it all the time. I feel like branding purposes especially, and, like, this is amazing. I, but, but, like, is most of yours food? Like, a lot of mine is, like, places to eat and stuff, which, yes. that in quotes. Like, that quotes and I like, style, too. I have, like, ten boards. So I have, like, okay. outfits, and then I have branding things. I have, like... I have for like specific trips what I would want or like 
a specific video that I've mm. like it's very organized. Gotcha. But I go to it all the time. Like I will wake up, I set my like outfit out the night before every I have done this since I was like ten years old. I love that. I never pick out my outfit morning of. It's just such a habit. Like I don't even think about it. But when I can't think of anything, I like go to my style board, I do this all the time. Like, I love that. I literally live through my Instagram collections. I, honestly bookmarks is like the best thing that yes. Instagram. Besides that and stories. At first I thought it was stupid and now I'm like, this is the best thing that ever happened to me. I guess right. same thing with Instagram stories. Yeah, it's so awesome. But I feel like for me, like I'll <laughs> A lot of my stuff that I save, besides obviously like inspiration and stuff like that, is food. I save recipes. Yeah. yeah. I mean, just like I follow this account called New Fork City, and it's like all these pasta dishes in New York. Oh. And so, like, I'll be like showing my girls, I'll be like, oh, we should do like something like this. And then they'll be like, Sam, wait, wait, like you literally have 16 pasta dishes saved in a row. And I'm like, oh, yeah, sorry about that. Like, hold on, I'm getting to it. I'm like scrolling. But every time I'm in New York for meetings and stuff, I like will try and go to like one different oh, restaurant that I have saved and stuff. But yeah, damn, there's so much good food in New York. It's crazy. Yes. Like, I haven't crazy. like craving a New York trip, but hopefully by the time this episode goes up, I just recently went because I want to go so bad. This is the longest I've gone without going to New York, and I just like miss it. It's I like get that. so inspired when I'm there, and it's I like such a cool city. I prefer to go by myself. Like yes. I would prefer to not even bring a plus one on a trip. Mm -hmm. And actually, I don't know if I prefer, but like I'm totally fine going on my own yeah. because it's like I walk the city and I'm by myself, and yeah. I'm like this is amazing. It's the best. Also, did you see the Gossip Girl just got yes. yes. It's, like, it's a new cast. How do we feel about that? Oh, though? no, I don't feel good about that at all. Me neither. That changes things. That's like, what did they do that for? Not Clue. What was it? wasn't Clueless, obviously. Well, they was did, it? The, no, they did. Well, they did. They did a reboot for something, completely changed the cast, and it was like trash. Yeah. I mean, that happens every time. But I, yeah, I would like Gossip Girl. It's so funny. I literally got into the show two years ago. Like, I yeah. watched it way after everybody else watched it. And all of a sudden, I was, like, telling all my friends, I'm like, oh, my God, have you guys seen Gossip Girl? And they're like, Sam, we watched that, like, six years ago. Yeah, what are you talking about? But I literally found it, and I would stay up till four in the morning, like, watching episodes. Yes. Like, it was one of those. That and Nashville. Like, I loved the show Nashville. I watch Nashville. I mean, it's, it's, like, addicting. But, like, I would stay up all night and watch episodes of Gossip Girl. And so when I found out this out today, I was so excited. Because I, like, binged it in probably, like, three weeks or something. Like, there was, like, eight seasons or something crazy. And yeah. I watched it, like, straight. I did, like, Winter Hill, too. Oh, my God. Yeah. It's so good. But, like, I feel like I'm, like, it's a new cast. Like, I don't know how I'm not going to like it. I regret even bringing it up now. Because well, I know I'm... Uh, hopefully, I'll like it. it's amazing. Hopefully, it's amazing. Hopefully, it's amazing. But, like, I'm going to give them room to fail. Yeah, same because way. I'm not going to put my expectations up and get my heart broken. I'm, like, is there not going to be one, like, Blake, yeah. like, one person? Like, I, we need I can't really see any of them wanting to, to do, it again. do it again. No. no. So, yeah. especially Blake, why would Blake do it? Like, everyone else maybe, but like, why would Blake Not Lively her. go back? She you know? was like one of my favorites. I know, I mean, she made the show. She was amazing. I know. I feel, oh. like, I, I feel like they're all just like moved on from it now. I always yeah. say, if I had less of a moral compass, I would be Blair Waldorf. Like, yes. I would love that. I'm like, if mm -hmm. I was like, not naturally like loving people and wanting to be a really nice person i would love to be like a mastermind She's like like I could do that. ego yes i'm like i would love that like it would be so fun for me but i would be like i would feel so awful all the time. yeah okay anyways we've been recording for a while thank you so much for coming yeah, on i will I have it. mayfair and her instagram in the show notes below be sure to go check them out the instagram is absolutely incredible trust me you guys have probably already seen it on instagram because like people share the posts and stories and stuff all the time <laughs> but thank you so much for coming on you're the best thank you for having me i loved it people tell me that i'm burned out i tell them i'm not like the rest but if i'm really being honest and you ask me how i'm doing i probably have to tell you that